up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Moss Family Chevrolet in Tampa, Florida. And of course, if I'm at a Chevy dealership, we're going to be doing some talking about one of my favorite cars of all time, the Chevrolet Corvette. So what I want to do with this one is we're going to do a little comparison because there's a lot of different flavors that you can get with your Chevrolet Corvette. And from the regular run-of-the-mill kind of person, they may see a Corvette and say, hey, they all look the same. But I promise you, each different trim level, each different type is not only going to have differences on the exterior, but also under the hood, around the car, under the fenders and whatnot. So let's talk a little Corvette history. Corvette's been around since 1953. First two years were a little bit of a fizzle because it was a straight six, power glide, uh, automatic transmission. In 1955, it was all because of Zora Arcus Duntov, that engineer on the Chevrolet team, got them to put the V8 into the Corvette. From there on, it was nothing but V8s. Now, of course, we know as we went from the 50s into the 60s and that muscle car heyday, power and cubic inches of engines were just out of control. Then into the 70s, EPA cracked down, all about emissions and the environment. We needed to try to make the cars cleaner. And with that, they robbed the cars of the horsepower that they rightfully deserved from the beginning. 1980s, technology started to come in with electronic fuel injection, and we start to see horsepower slowly start to creep back up. 1990, the ZR1, 375 horsepower. I remember being in eighth grade in 1990, and that was huge. 375 horsepower was huge. As we progress, horsepower increases overall, whether it's a ZR1, a standard Corvette, and whatnot. And today, when you look at your top choices in the C7, we're in the seventh generation of the Corvette that goes from 2014 to current, you have some choices. You have your Stingray, which is right behind me to my right here. You have your Grand Sport, which is right here on my left. You're gonna also have your choice of a Z06 and then the top dog, the ZR1. Let's talk a little bit about that name Stingray. Stingray first appeared on a Corvette in 1963. Grand Sport, that also appeared with a Corvette in the 1960s, 1963, because guess what? It was Zora Arcus Duntov who figured out a way behind closed doors to build a Corvette that was more than capable of eating up 427 Cobras, and it was called the Corvette Grand Sport. Unfortunately, because of a lot of politics back in the 1960s, the big three swore to one another that there would be no big, huge companies, you know, no corporate deals in racing. So unfortunately, the Grand Sport program had a little bit of success, but not the type of success if Chevrolet was fully backing the program. Fast forward to 1996. That's when the Grand Sport name first came back to a Corvette, and it was actually a street production Corvette. It was the final year of the C4 generation, and they made a limited amount of them. They were blue with white racing stripes and those hash marks, and that really is where the excitement comes back. Now, for future generations, like the C7, it's now a trim level, an option level, to get you more performance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare what is it all about to go from a Stingray to the Grand Sport? Because under the hood, very, very similar when we look at that 6.2 liter V8, that LT1 V8. So let's go ahead and start off with the front of these two Corvettes. I'm gonna back up and we're gonna start with the Stingray here. So you can see 2014 was the first year of the C7 and it really was an aggressive new look to the Corvette. I love the open grill. I'm not a big fan. I'm gonna zonk in the center of that grill, that chrome bar that goes across the front. I understand why they put it there. It's to tie it back to that C1 generation with some chrome on that front end of the car. But I feel like if you go with the blackout kit, it's better just to black that out. Even remember, when you look at the Corvette emblem on the front nose, you could get that blacked out as well. And with this one, it's chromed, and that kind of makes sense because chrome with the chrome. Now, one thing 
you'll see is how they added extra material to the front fascia down in that lower spoiler area. This is gonna help scoop air into that radiator. The great thing about Corvettes is the tradition. When you own one of these cars, you're owning part of that legend. And all Corvettes, except for, remember, wait two years, 53 and 54, all of them have V8s except for those first two years. That's what's underneath the hood. Speaking of the hood, love the body lines. I really love how aggressive it is. And I know that when they came out with the C7, a lot of people from a distance were confusing this car with a Ferrari. You have a functional, even though this is the base Stingray, you have a functional heat extractor on the hood area. That hood is gonna be clamshell style where it opens up backwards just like any other Corvette before it. And that's another style. Let's go to the front of the Z06, uh, excuse me, of the Grand Sport. The reason why I said Z06 is this car actually has the Z06 body. So with that body, it's going to be wider. And you can see how the body has additional material to it that is going to hide those wheels and make it more aerodynamic. There's that large open mouth grill that I really like. You're going to have that functional ducting to help cool the brakes and help get more air into the front radiator. With the Grand Sport, you'll notice once we open up the hood, it has a larger uh, radiator, believe it or not. And that's going to help increase the cooling. Now, one thing that this Grand Sport doesn't have, which I'm gonna zonk it, there needs to be that additional lower lip spoiler here. If you notice, there's a lot of real estate, which is good, but I think probably in delivery or maybe here at the dealership, maybe it got knocked off or it never got put on in the first place, but it needs to have that lower lip spoiler that goes across. That would just help with the extra aggressive look but if you notice most of the lines are very similar and that's a, the wonderful thing about it is that it just has enough to separate it but one of the key ways to figure that out is right there with that extra material hood heat extractor is going to be the same kind of setup compared to the stingray same finish on it and maybe that's something that they could have done a little differently on the grand sport to make it stand out a little bit more but let's go ahead and check out the sides of these two Corvettes because I promise you, you're gonna see some differences there. All right guys, time to check out the side of the Stingray. So like I said, this car has been produced since 2014, just the way you see it. You don't have that extra material, that aerodynamic material like you do on the Grand Sport. There is the Stingray wheel. Now behind that wheel is a rotor that is 13.6 inches in diameter. The reason why I say that is because you'll see when we get to the Grand Sport, bigger, bigger rotor. Bigger rotor means better stopping capabilities. This is a 19 by eight inch wheel. And that's gonna be another number you wanna hold on to because things are gonna be different over at the Grand Sport. If you do notice though, you have a very nice um, Brembo setup with the Corvette logo on there. And I kinda like the way they went with this gunmetal. Personally, I probably would've went with the red calipers. It really would've worked wonderful with the red paint on this car. And I also like the Stingray logo on the uh, center cap cover there. Very nice touch. As we work our way down, this is a Stingray specific side vent. And that's another Corvette tradition. Having these side vents over the years, they weren't functional. Well, guess what? In the 21st century, these are functional. Functional for dragging heat out from underneath the engine compartment for aerodynamics. There's that really cool Stingray logo. I really like how they did that. Very sleek and, and just, you know, Stingray, that shape goes back for so many generations. As we work our way back, much of this is going to be very similar to the Grand Sport with the body lines, very aggressive. And I love how everything flares out because remember, the Corvette's going to be wider at the rear. Speaking of the rear, Something that's different than a lot of the earlier generations is that there's a balance. You see this vent, this vent here? This is for cooling the transmission. This has a transaxle. For many years now, the Corvettes had a transaxle. What that, mean, what that means is engines up front, transmission is in the back. Before that, like if you go back to C4 generation, the transmission and the engine connected all up front. What's the downside? The downside is it's a lot of weight up front. With having a transaxle, it balances it out. We just need to get some more cooling. So you'll notice the shape of the vent. When we get to the Grand Sport, they're gonna be very, very different. It's that same 
metallic black finish as the hood uh, heat extractor. So that's a very nice touch. And I also like on all the Corvettes now, no door handles. You just push the button here and the door opens. There's the back end of the business. Now the reason why I want to show you this is because 20 inch wheels. So the wheels are staggered in size. With that smaller wheel set up up front, that's going to quicken up the steering. We want it, this is rear wheel drive, so we want to get more power to the ground. So you're looking at a 20 inch wheel, 20 inch in diameter, and 10 inches wide. So when we get to the Grand Sport, you'll see the difference. As we wrap it up around the back, one thing that makes Corvette so great is that functional hatchback design. You'd be surprised when we open up the back, you could fit a lot of stuff in this Corvette. And hey, maybe, maybe that's that one thing that you say to your wife, or maybe you're saying to your husband, hey, I can use this as my daily driver. I'll even get the groceries for you. That sounds good to me, because guess what? You can make it happen in the Corvette. Try doing that with some other high performance cars. Not gonna happen. Wrapping out the back, I really love the rear ends on these C7s, so wide. And like I said, it's just such a aerodynamic shape that's so efficient. You have functional venting, top and bottom. This was the new design of the taillights. Yes, they're squarish, but they still have that round look to them. And that's another Corvette tradition. I love the black diffuser, and I really love how I think no other car company can do four exhausts like the Chevrolet Corvette. Really nicely done. There's our traditional badging with the checkered flag and the uh, Chevy flag there. That's always been like that. This one has a little center kick up just enough. You can option this when you go higher up the trim level where you could get a larger rear spoiler on this back deck leg. But let's go ahead, enough with this thing, right? Let's go check out the Grand Sport. All right, guys, time to come and check out the side of the Grand, uh, Grand Sport. So as you swing it around, you can see, like I was showing you, that extra material, and then check out that wheel. So up front, we still have a 19-inch wheel, but this one is two inches wider. It's 19 by 10 inches. Those rotors 14.5 inches in diameter, and guess what? You have that at all four corners. On the Stingray, the rear rotors are actually smaller because technically, more weight when you get hard on the brakes on a racetrack is gonna transfer the front, but you know what? They decided to go 14.5 all the way around. Increase, six piston caliper. So we're going from a smaller caliper to a larger caliper. The caliper is what's squeezing that rotor and you'll see it's a two piece setup. Aluminum hat, slotted, that's gonna help cool those brakes. Because remember, at the end of the day, these two Corvettes have the same horsepower. But what makes them really different is when you take it out on a road course or an autocross track or your favorite twisty road, what's underneath the fenders, front and rear, and this whole setup is gonna make you handle and be able to take it faster than that Stingray, which is gonna give you the faster lap times. But I really love the flat black, the red trim around uh, the, the wheel there, perfect. Here's another way to separate Grand Sport from Stingray, the side vent. And what's nice is Chevrolet puts the Grand Sport script there for you. So you don't have to go searching, this is functional. It's different from a Z06, Z06, would not have the centerpiece here. It'd be all black like that. Whereas with the Stingray, it's a much smaller vent. So larger venting, we're, we're trying to get more performance out of the car. Love the Grand Sport uh, logo. As we transition back, now this is all gonna be the same. Here are some differences. You have this large rear air duct here, featured in black. That's gonna be different. That is not on the Stingray. And then when we pop up, here is on your vents for the transaxle. Now, one thing you'll notice is, is that this has the additional top scoop piece that's gonna help funnel that air in. One way to tell this separate from a Z06 and this Grand Sport is this would be black on a, on a Z06. On a Grand Sport is painted, and to be honest with you, I like the painted one better than on the Z06. Let's talk about the rear. Like I said, we're not focusing on the front because you would maybe think that with the size of those rotors. 14.5 inch rotor. Now they go with a four piston caliper on the rear. These wheels are 20 by 12, 20 inches in diameter, 12 inches wide. So your contact patch is now wider. More rubber you could put down, better grip, better grip, the faster you're gonna go. Real simple. Zora Duntov believed in all that. You could see how with this package, there's that larger rear uh, deck lid spoiler that, that you have. I like the way it's finished in that nice metallic black. And then to wrap it off, 
Here is the tail end of the business for the Grand Sport. So functional venting, just like before. You could see the difference along the bottom, but very, very nice. I just personally would have gone with black on the Corvette script and on the cross flag. So I'm not gonna zonk that because some people like the chrome, but let's go ahead and check out underneath the hoods of these two Corvettes. All right, guys, so we got the traditional hoods, that backward style hood open on both of these Corvettes. We're just gonna focus on the Grand Sport because for the most part, very, very similar, but there is one major difference. So that is our LT1 engine. When you go Grand Sport or you go with the Z51 performance package on the Stingray, you're looking at 460 horsepower from that 6.2 liter V8, 465 foot-pounds of torque. If you're wondering, well, what does this Grand Sport weigh? It weighs around 3,420 pounds. The standard Stingray is a little lighter because the body isn't as wide. That one's 3,398 pounds. Now here is the interesting fact about the Grand Sport in particular. It has a dry sump oil system. If you've never heard of that, what that basically is, is that normally on an engine, all the oil is held in that oil pan. And then as you're driving, you know, it's got baffles in it to try to keep it as stable as possible to get picked up by the oil pump and circulated through the engine. What happens is with a car like the Grand Sport, if this car is gonna be tracked more than say maybe this regular Stingray, as you go into the turns, the G-forces is gonna slosh the oil around in that oil pan and it is possible that you might have oil starvation from the oil pump not being able to pick up the oil properly. With a dry sump system, like on the Grand Sport, the Z06, the ZR1, and race cars worldwide, the oil is in a separate can container, separate canister, so to speak, and it is slowly fed into that engine. And what that does is it allows a consistent flow of oil, no matter what your car is doing, left, right Gs, front, back Gs, it's gonna get consistent oil to it. Another thing with the Grand Sport that's different from the standard Stingray is you have an electronic LSD. No, we're not talking about some type of new 21st century hallucinogen. We're talking about a limited slip differential. That's gonna help transmit power down to the ground. As you come out of that turn and you roll on throttle, it's gonna help get you off the corner because it might look cool to swing out the back and blow up a bunch of smoke off the back end of the car from spinning the tires, but guess what? You're not going in the most important direction, and that's forward. Speaking of these two, let's go ahead and fire them up. guys we're inside the 2019 Corvette Grand Sport we're pretty much just gonna focus on this particular model rather than go back and forth because to be honest with you they got the same color interior neither of them are option with the competition seats let's go ahead and focus though on the door panel so one thing you'll notice with Corvettes overall is that the trim levels have gotten much nicer there's a much more upscale feel to the car and really has tied it into a whole package. There once was upon a time not so long ago where the interiors in Corvettes were kind of bland, to be honest with you. Didn't match the outside looks or the performance, but in here, it's right up par with any of the exotics. You have nice soft touch material. I like the way when the door shut, it comes in and flows in very nicely. You have a nice oh crap handle for the passenger as you're taking this around your favorite race course and giving them a heart attack really like that another thing that i think is cool is let's go back and i want to show you on the air vent it actually has the temperature control for the passenger over here so they don't have to come into your space that's their space that's all they get you get all the fun right here i love the way it flows down great height awesome height for the center console you have this one has the eight speed automatic transmission i personally would go with the seven speed manual but i like the touches the corvette logo eight speed logo there leather obviously on the shifter if we're gonna zonk it it's a little bit still on the plasticky side around the infotainment system you have your 12 volt right here 
Underneath here, you're gonna have your two cup holders, mode selector. So this, you could put in the sport, which it is right now. It has that active exhaust system, which you can make it louder or quieter. If you're wondering, all this great stuff, how much does it cost? MSRP on this Grand Sport, the way you see it, is around $72,000. Inside on Corvettes are awesome. Lots of room. I actually feel more comfortable in this Corvette than in a Camaro. I don't care what Camaro of the last generation uh, since 2010. This Corvette is so much more comfortable and there's a lot more room and easier just to see out of this whole thing. Seats. They re this is really where they invested some time and some energy. The material's great. I love the white contrast stitching. And for the standard seat, it's got plenty of bolstering. It could be better on the bottom. But if you want more bolstering, you can go with the competition seats, which not only look really good, but they have more bolstering to hold you in. Speaking of holding you in, why don't you come on over here and I'll show you the business end behind this wheel. All right, guys, here we go. Business time. What's holding us in? We got the side bolstering on these seats and you're holding on to the steering wheel. I like down here on the sill how they have the Corvette logo with the cross flags. If you haven't been a Corvette lately, like say the last one you had was a C4, these are so easy to get in and out of and those materials are much better. The roof, the roof you could actually take right off. It's a target top. So you take it off and you could slide it into the back for storage so you could get that open air feel. Steering wheel. Love the shape, love the design. I wish they would have went a little bit more for the Grand Sport. How about put the Grand Sport logo here? That would have been a nice touch. Um, and this kind of feels a little plasticky, so maybe some carbon fiber just to spruce it up. I love the dash setup on these Corvettes. You have an analog speedometer, and then you have an analog fuel gauge and temperature gauge, and in the center, you have your digital tech and whatnot. And what's really wonderful is that as you go into your different modes, it actually will show you right at the bottom there. So you go into tour and you select that, it shows you exactly eco mode. One thing that's awesome about the Corvettes is that you don't have to pay gas guzzler tax on this Grand Sport. Gas guzzler tax is a um, government tax that is put on cars that don't get the greatest of fuel economy. And obviously a lot of performance cars, it's more about the go rather than the MPGs. The Chevrolet engineers, this thing gets actually pretty good gas mileage in the city, depending on your right foot, around 16 miles to the gallon, and that's not too shabby. Overall, I love the seating position. AC controls work great. Let me show you this. How many of you are James Bond fans here? And I've showed this before, but I'm going to show it again because it's really cool. On the infotainment uh, screen area, you hit this screen button, and it actually drops down. You have a USB jack in there and you can put your cell phone, credit card, wallet, you close it up, let's say you're gonna valet your Grand Sport, which first of all, if you're gonna do that, I think you're nuts, but let's say you're gonna valet or let your friend drive it or something, well, if they're your friend, they're probably not gonna rob you, but maybe they will, maybe they'll rob your girl, I don't know, but anyways, you could actually lock that up, it's a different key number that you enter into the touchscreen, dual climate control, they did put a Grand Sport logo down here, but the placement of it is terrible. I mean, Tom is having a hard enough time being able to get it. They should have took this logo and put it across the bottom here. Let's go ahead and pop the back so we can see just how usable this Corvette is for everyday business. All right, guys, time to check out what can we fit in a Corvette. So you pop the back, the hatch lifts up, and that's something that just separates the Corvette from all the competition is just the amount of sheer space in the back of the car. Like I was telling you, you could use this as a daily driver, so easy. If you're wondering what are these things on each side and then also at the back, you're actually gonna be able to lock in that target top. That's gonna make sure that as you're in enjoying that uh, breeze, the top isn't gonna be sliding around in the back of the car, which is very, very smart. But these are the things that make this car really stand out. Not just the performance, not just the looks, not just the heritage, but the usability. But like every other review, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys, it's been a wonderful day here at Moss Family Chevrolet. Definitely gotta give a huge thank you and a shout out to Ricky and everybody here at the dealership. Not only getting two Corvettes together, but also both finished in red, Stingray and Grand Sport. If these are the types of comparisons that you like to see on Rady's Rides, leave a comment in that comment section. If you are new to the channel and you're on your way out, 
hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you. Thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Check out all my different forms of social media. You know what they're called. You want yourself some Radies Rides merch? Click that link in the description. It takes you right to Spreadshirt. Obviously, we need to thank Big Guns McGee, Tom Moshner, out here working the camera, getting ready for his next, next powerlifting competition. So thank you, Tom, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.